Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this uh, virtual visit. Unfortunately, it's uh, still a virtual one. Um, but we will make try to make the best out of it, what's possible. Your guide underground will be Laza, together with uh, Noemi, I guess. Um, Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, I will make um, more or less intelligent comments from here, from upstairs. Um, and um, so we get them ready to go down. Um, we are sitting here in the, uh, in the control room. At the moment, you see it's relatively empty because we don't have shifts. Um, we try now to populate the shifts uh, more and more. And we have um, now always for certain weeks um, shift crews, but at the moment we are without. Okay. I'm... Oops. Okay, you get another one. No, no, Drop down. Put it back. Oh. <laughs> oh, we will buy another one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I don't need a helmet, I guess. Yes. No. Why don't I show the control room? It doesn't, it breaks when I try to get it over my head. Okay, I'm showing the control room. Yes. Could you please give us a one that works? I can open it. Sorry about the technicalities. Cables, cables, cables. Okay. Okay. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Okay, guys. I'm, I'm going underground. Yes. Okay, Laza will go now underground. Um, we can see him here um, carrying the camera. He is uh, leaving the control room, passing through the UPS room, and then entering the area where the elevator is. Nice installation. Artistic one. Yes, of um, all the photos, and uh, then uh, he uh, batches in and goes underground. So then he has to wait for the elevator. Yeah, people are complaining yes. that they don't see the both cameras. This is probably because they use a, an old uh, uh, version of the, the Zoom. Uh, anyway, I will take care of, of showing everything. Uh, this time probably I remove uh, ourselves and you will see how Laza batches in. Yes. And as soon as uh, he is going to get into the elevator, I think I will swap because yeah. we are going to lose him. Yeah. Um, Laza, you show more mostly the ceiling. Um, if you put the camera a bit more down, one sees more. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, have to. That's better. Happy now? No, it's much better. Oh, yes. Much better. Thank you. Sorry, I was fighting the, the iris reader. Didn't like me today. Okay. You have to clean your iris from time to time. Oh, yeah. uh, glasses, glasses. Glasses, mask, helmet, uh, tired eyes. Mm -hmm. so, so this is our main elevator. Yes, it's the main elevator. Um, and this is actually for CMS, the only one. The other one belongs to the machine and we can use only um, uh, this one during beam operation because the other one um, is not shielded enough. Um, uh, and therefore, um, this is, uh, is the one. The, of course, the machine one we use uh, for emergency uh, evacuation, but um, otherwise we use only this one. But it's much smaller. Yes, so... and faster. <laughs> Okay, so you can see the first floor is minus 82 meters. 
the third floor is at minus 97 meters. That's the ground level of the experiment. And yes, and that's the ground level of the experiment, and it is below the waterbed of the Jura. And that was uh, why this hole is so small and why we had to construct CMS as it is, that we uh, pre-mounted it on the first surface and brought it down. Because uh, um, the uh, ground had to be frozen out, then the concrete had to put in, we put in, um, and after it was cured, um, uh, it was warmed up again. Um, and uh, this complicated construction required uh, the hole to be as small as possible. And this triggered then the idea of uh, uh, pre-constructing the detector on the surface and bringing it down in pieces. So now um, Lazar is entering the elevator and he goes for the uh, minus second level, which is at uh, something like 87 meters in principle on beam height. Minus one, minus one, one. Go to minus one. Okay. So I had to change the, the view because we lost them. Okay. Yeah. That's, that is normal in, in an elevator shaft. Yes. On the way down, we lose them. On the way up, they can maintain the connection. Okay. <laughs> but we hope uh, fully get them back at yeah. a certain moment. They will, they will come and go. So I think you can continue. And in the meantime, I can maybe just say a few words about um, uh, the control room and our shift uh, operation. Uh, oh, yeah. When we are in uh, normal uh, operation, we are sitting here typically with uh, at least four people. Um, and uh, um, we have uh, the technical shifter sitting uh, in this corner. We have the shift leader sitting on, uh, on this desk. And we have a trigger and duck person, which is, uh, is, sitting, uh, is sitting here. The technical shifter is the one who switches on and off uh, the detectors, who uh, also has uh, the uh, control over the access system, which, of course, when there's beam in the machine, nobody should uh, uh, go in the uh, UX cavern. But in the US cavern, one can still go. And now we see that we have uh, Lazar back. So Laza, tell us where you are now. This is the shaft. This is the, uh, the staircase, the construction staircase. <clears throat> it is. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm at level minus one. Sorry, sorry, with the dry air here, it's not obvious to, to always push the right contact. So I'm at the level minus one. I'm showing you the, the, the service shaft uh, and the uh, auxiliary staircase. I'm showing you also the, the concrete uh, uh, shell for the, for the main staircase that we all, and the elevator shaft. There are some uh, ventilation pipes. And now I'm going to go into the magnet area. You see the bus bars the... on the ceiling? These are the big bus bars for um, uh, getting the energy out of the... Uh, Magnet in case of uh, a, a problem, a serious fast discharge. So good that we have access everywhere. So this is the magnet area, and this is the place where we make a liquid nitrogen. So uh, helium. Box. Helium. No helium. The nitrogen we buy. Yeah, it's a helium okay. which we make. <clears throat> so uh, this is the 4K helium which we uh, are using to cool the magnet. At the moment, um, the magnet is not at 4K, but it is at 15K. We are on the path going down. Since uh, about three weeks, um, the magnet is uh, on its way from room temperature down to 4 Kelvin. And we made a little pause at 15 to do some intermediate measurements. Uh, and uh, we will continue probably tomorrow or so, um, going then to, to 4K, which takes another three, four days. Um, and uh, this box, um, can you maybe you show it again, the, the white box <clears throat> there? <clears throat> excuse me. The, uh, 
gaseous helium goes in and comes out as liquid one by a system of expansion turbines, which uh, um, cool, uh, cool this down. So now you are kind of looking into our, um, what we call the CV room in CMS slang. This is a room with all of the cooling installations. Um, somehow your microphone is muted. Maybe if you open it for a moment, you can, one can hear the uh, really annoying noise, which is- Fortunately uh, not. Okay, he cannot, not. but uh, whenever you go in there, be aware that uh, it's very difficult to communicate with anybody. You have to shout really loud because um, all of the uh, big pumps for the different cooling circuits uh, are in this room and they are running all the time. And what you also see is um, when you look over the installations there that we have typically for each of the circuits, we have two pumps and one of them is, uh, is running and one is a reserve. And now uh, Laza is coming out of it. And uh, um, on the right side, you see um, big uh, transformers, which uh, um, uh, produce uh, the, uh, the electricity and the correct voltage for the experiment. And on the left side, where it's still the people, you see the, the guy working. Um, uh, this is our new freewheel terrestrial area. And uh, what the person is working on is he is connecting the bus bars um, uh, to uh, the electrical um, cubicles. Uh, we are in the last uh, phase of, uh, of this, and we hope that sometime next week we can start um, with the commissioning of the, um, of the magnet, and then this has to be ready. Leaving now this area again, um, on the left hand you would find the, uh, the elevator, and going in the um, counting room. Uh, here is the shaft again. And this is what we call the counting room. This is a big room with uh, uh, racks, rows of racks. And at the end of this rows of, of the racks, you uh, we come to the uh, separation wall um, between the US and the UX. And this wall is a bit uh, special. It is a seven meter thick concrete wall, which is armed with several hundred tons of steel. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are below the, uh, the waterbed of uh, um, the Jura. So we have a permanent pressure on the shaft uh, of the Jura water. And uh, without proper anchoring, um, the entire hole would uh, um, shift it away. And also it prevents from swimming up. Um, and it has a big advantage that uh, it uh, shields all of the radiation, even if LHC, also HLLHC will run at full speed. Um, uh, this wall is thick enough that behind that, it is not a radiation zone. And this is a big advantage because here now in this area, everybody, can work at any time, um, which makes uh, the control um, much, much easier than, for example, at our friends at Atlas, which have not this advantage. And here you see the uh, uh, different racks. OK, I can't see so quickly which one is what exactly. We have here oh, high, voltage. high voltage. This uh, red cable, this is high voltage uh, cables for the uh, muon, for mm -hmm. muon chambers, hundreds of kilometers. Um, are um, in there. And <clears throat> now we come closer to uh, the inner sanctum, um, the detector hall. Um, if you would go straight on, you would come into the bypass tunnel of the machine. There we better don't go because uh, it is closed and uh, uh, LHC would not react very happily if we opened this door. Um, but from there, you have um, access to the uh, to the accelerator. Uh, Laza, if you turn back, exactly. Uh, there is a small map about the underground. Yeah. So, and uh, um, we are here exactly, and this is the bypass tunnel which you can enter, um, and uh, between the. Uh, 
uh, main uh, tunnel and the bypass tunnel is the, uh, is the experimental hall. So on the left side, you find the, uh, the gas room. There we have all our gas installations. Um, but we don't go in this sign. Uh, um, you can guess what um, uh, this uh, means. Um, it does not attention. Um, there is a sleeping colleague, but uh, this is the sign for the uh, lack of oxygen alarm. So please uh, remember that because uh, of course, in gas installations, this is one of the possible alarms. Now we have to pass a second uh, um, uh, pad. pad, yes, personal access device. Um, but if Lazar can do. Yes, if he gets through, if he gets recognized. So this is yellow. Yes. Breaking through this during beam time. When, when you will dump the beam. Exactly. Yes. So that you better don't do. Especially because we have cameras all around. Yes, and you will be seen. Yeah. So he managed, and he is now walking along the, this uh, um, magic seven meter um, thick wall in a minute. The boy which goes to the Oh, no, Amy is following him. Yeah, and and uh, Mohammed is, Mohammed is also now. coming. Yes, this is the iris scanner. Now it scans both irises and checks for the blood circulation as well. Yeah. If you if you know what I mean after the angels and demons. Yes. <laughs> so this That's is the the, uh, the big ball which. Uh, we were talking about uh, seven meters long or thick. And uh, now one enters into um, the experimental hall on uh, what we call the visitor platform. Here we are also welcoming um, visitors in normal times. And they stay on this balcony. And from there, stay uh, directly at the at the detector and uh, um, we are on what we call the minus end that is the end where the shaft um, uh, is uh, and this is uh, just according to the uh, um, coordinates of uh, CMS the minus set is uh, um, uh, the is in at the minus set end of the of the hall um, and it is a, a right-handed uh, coordinate system and with that you can always construct um, what direction we mean with X, Y, and Z. And the shaft is on the minus set. This is just what you, what you remember. And then you can always find the coordinate system when you are in the hole. So we are looking now on uh, what we call YE minus one. So it is the end cap uh, disc number one. This is a, a special disc. It has uh, the uh, E cal and the H cal um, as a nose, and it has uh, um, uh, muon chambers, uh, CSCs, um, and gems, and, and the CSCs and RPCs on yeah. the on uh, the flat side, and we have um, uh, the gem chamber below, also below this uh, aluminium foil. Yeah. Um, uh, when we close the detector, and we see this in a minute on the other on the other end, um, this disc is moved inside. The, uh, the vac tank. Um, uh, the opening is ripped ring. This is the cryostat of the of the magnet. And inside we have the tracker and our calorimeters, the electromagnetic calorimeter and the hadronic calorimeter. And then um, the red structure is iron and uh, with uh, equipped uh, uh, and instrumented with the DTs. So we are now passing along the beam to the other end because there at the moment the action is uh, is going on. So you still see a gap. Okay, I so can't- So as it says the YE3 is still moving. The YE3 is still moving. So we have closed um, the YE1. So the equivalent of the, the thing with the nose, this was done yesterday. We have 
done today the YE2, and now we are moving the ensemble of YE3 and YE4. In principle, the last two is, uh, is a combination of two disks, and this is still, is, uh, is still uh, moving. Uh, and the hope is that we uh, close it today and then we lock it tomorrow, tomorrow morning. It is always a bit a tricky thing. And if you uh, watched uh, the, uh, the different uh, management notes uh, this week, uh, there was a bit of a drama when we were closing uh, um, this end. The, uh, the first disk, the, y, um, the YE1, um, first in the first attempt didn't, uh, didn't fit. We had to put it back and then uh, try again. So we lost a bit of time. It's always very tricky because the tolerances and clearances which we have are extremely small. We are moving um, 1400 tons and uh, um, we have clearances from about uh, two to three centimeters, which is not very much. So now Laza is already walking on. He's on the next floor, the fourth floor. What you, Laza, can you stop for one moment? Um, uh, when uh, what we see here, is um, uh, also something new from, the, uh, from this uh, um, shutdown. And this is a new cable chain which uh, connects uh, the YE1 and which will be used mainly for the future um, detectors because we will take off the nose of the end cap and we will install a new, a new detector. And for that, we need, of course, new services and for, for that, um, we installed already the uh, uh, moving cable chains, which, is, uh, which are uh, there behind this, uh, uh, this fence. And what you see in there are cables from the gems. They are already in. So now we are continuing on this uh, fourth floor. And a few racks. And then other will go up to the highest floor, um, to the fifth one, to give you a little bit of a view from the on the top of the experiment. For that, first he has to find his way. Yes, yeah, this this place became very crowded now. Yes, um, uh, it was, uh, uh, you had a very nice view before, but now with the new cable chain, um, it is uh, pretty crowded. So we are now at the end. He is uh, passing from one side to the other over the, what we call the blockhouse. This is a connection between the machine tunnel and uh, the uh, CMS uh, hall. Um, on the right side, uh, he is now just passed. You, uh, you look at the, at the ceiling. Yes, um, what he wants to show you is the, is the big shaft. Um, uh, there we, this is the shaft through which we um, lower all of our big equipment. Also all the discs and all the uh, um, wheels were lowered um, uh, through this uh, shaft and uh, were put um, in, uh, uh, in their final geometrical assembly, um, having space only, lateral space only of about 10 centimeters um, on each side of the, uh, of the hole. So it was, uh, this was pretty adventurous to bring this stuff down. The uh, most heavy element was 2000 tons and the um, Y1 is uh, 1400. So now this is the top, uh, the top of the um, experiment. Um, uh, and we are going down. Oh, he's now, he's, uh, yeah. On what you see, yeah. yeah, what, Slaza, stop a moment. What you see here um, is uh, this green structure. This is the, is the connection of the machine uh, LHC to the experiment. And you see coming out on the, uh, on the left side, um, the last support of uh, our beam pipe, and inside this uh, um, uh, big iron nose is the uh, last uh, uh, collimator and uh, vacuum equipment for for pumping. And uh, in normal operation, this will be covered by the shielding which you see on the right side in the picture. Um, this is a foldable shield. It has uh, 
uh, two pieces which are fold around the, uh, the green structure because there is the uh, highest uh, radiation within uh, in CMS and uh, to protect the equipment, um, this is shielded by this, what we call the rotating shield, because it has uh, two uh, um, pivots on which it is uh, rotating. This is the last thing we do when we close the experiment, that we close the rotating shield. If the rotating shield is closed, the experiment is closed, and then um, we can start. So it's going down again. This uh, underneath the blockhouse is what we call the HF garage. This is uh, the parking uh, place for the HF um, uh, calorimeters. Um, they are also radioactive. Therefore, they have uh, the our garage doors are lead doors, which uh, are closed also to protect the, the people working in there. Um, this blue equipment is uh, uh, the hydraulic to with which we move the uh, uh, the discs uh, and the wheels, and uh, um, we do this with these uh, steel ropes. The idea is we lift um, all the elements on air pads, um, and then uh, we need only relatively small hydraulics to move them um, on the uh, uh, on the floor. Here you see the air pads, um, twenty bar put on those. Um, lift uh, even the heaviest elements by about uh, um, half a centimeter, and then uh, we can uh, we, they slide over the floor. One has to be very careful um, uh, because the floor is inclined by 1.2 million by 1.2 milliard, yeah. And uh, um, uh, this uh, um, is uh, leads uh, uh, to uh, the fact that if a piece starts sliding it's continuous sliding. If the slipstick is, uh, uh, is over, um, then uh, it continues sliding. So therefore, if, you pull, if we pull downhill, we always have to have another rope on the other side to, to stop it again. But maybe, Lada, you can lift up a little bit and I say a few words to the beam pipe. So what well, one of the major projects of um, this shutdown was the installation of a new beam pipe. And if you even just compare uh, a picture from today with a picture from uh, three years ago when uh, it was open um, the last time when we opened the detector, um, you will see the difference. The uh, new beam pipe is, uh, has a much smaller uh, diameter. And uh, this also has uh, the consequence that at this time, our closing mechanism is a bit um, more complicated because um, this new beam pipe, it is much lighter because it is out of aluminum instead of steel, but it is also much uh, smaller in radius, um, sags significantly more. And our friends from the vacuum team uh, want for the first closure that we are particularly careful and does not let it just hang through. So therefore we have to take uh, particular care and therefore also our closing takes a bit longer. So, so according, are... according to Noemi, the operation has stopped for today. Okay. Uh, the Y plus three is not closed fully. Not completely. You see. Okay. And this is going to happen probably tomorrow. This happens tomorrow morning. Mm. Yes. Yeah. They have to do the final survey and they have then to uh, to lock it. It's uh, it's very close, but the locking um, they do tomorrow. Um, and uh, yes, and then this end is closed. And the hope is that by um, uh, Friday, we can uh, move uh, the, uh, start moving the other end. Yes. So, and uh, what you see also between the, uh, um, the racks, um, there are um, beams in the, um, on the floor, which you can take out because the, um, the different elements are connected also with uh, cable chains, which allow um, that you move the elements without uncabling anything. And uh, if you look, sneak down there, you see one of these really big, big cable Don't chains. Don't go down, Laza, please. There is no network there. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
this is the yeah we don't go in the underground but uh, there are these uh, cable chains and there are also some some infrastructure some racks so if you uh, um, ever do shifts or safety tours or so um, you will also uh, learn um, to go there this is the uh, the ground now from the from the second axis shaft this is our small shaft we call it the tx and what you see at the at the back wall is a tower of uh, concrete blocks which are moved into the into the door which we uh, through which we are just going through um, uh, with a big hydraulic and that's also the reason there is these uh, yellow white stripes this is the the path of this uh, uh, big door which closes this shaft uh, from the uh, uh, from the experimental hall to um, uh, avoid any radiation um, in outside um, the uh, the UXC and with that we can also maintain the fact that the uh, uh, US the service cavern is uh, not a radiation designated zone. Ask for questions in a minute. Um, so I think we have made now a nice tour here. And maybe there are questions. So people should not be shy. Please um, send it through the QA. People are not able to talk. Uh, people are not able, able to talk. So yeah. Um, but, uh, we are not seeing streaming from the other camera, thanks. Okay, but this is not a question. This, that has already been solved. This has been solved. So please uh, use the chat to ask um, if anything is uh, unclear. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the laser is now showing that there is still some remnant magnetization in uh, um, the big iron structure. Um, and that is also um, uh, a reason that the people who are working there and close to that are still for them we still have the requirement that they are not aware of pacemakers um i'm waiting for the day when we can we can have a virtual visit with full magnetic field yes <laughs> then it will be this will be fun uh, well in that case we we show the field uh, strength not with the no uh, not with the the spins but rather we have a spanner <laughs> So everybody seems to be completely overwhelmed or not able to type. Well, we 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 got we got two Q and A. Ah yes, we got two Q and A. Let ah, me see. Zachariah. See Zachary, how much does it take away? Um, so uh, as it is um, fully equipped with everything, I think it's fourteen thousand five hundred tons. About. We also got a question in the chat. How when the much magnet is on? Ah, okay. Does the field affect the objects on the surface? No. No, on the surface, uh, no, not. So um, uh, this not. But how much time does it take to charge and discharge a magnet? About four hours. If we do a normal um, charge or discharge. If we have a fast discharge, it's in a few minutes, um, but only discharge. We don't charge it. Uh, and, also, and also, we try to avoid the like, fast discharge as much as Of we course. Can. Okay, now that I'm in a less noisy environment, yeah, I am. I am exiting through the lowest level, where we again have a zigzag structure to to stop neutrons from pouring out of the collision hole. What is inter may be interesting for people is to realize that this thing is a leaky feeder cable and antenna for a GSM. So we have excellent connection to Swisscom underground. <laughs> Even though on surface is pretty bad. <laughs> the surface is not Swisscom. No, that's a problem. Um, uh, and they change it in between, but we hope that this will change at a certain moment. Yeah. So the connection is perfect the, here. This video feed comes through the leaky feeders now. Yeah. Okay. So um, Lada is uh, exiting again. So what you see here on the right side, this is the, the material access uh, device, uh, which is not allowed for uh, for people to go through, um, but the, it's a uh, it's a quarter, uh, it's sort of it's a box where you put your equipment in from one side and then you retrieve it from the other side. 
how much residual radiation is there in the different detector complements? And the and beam, the beam shield. shield. Uh, this depends on the time. Good question. Um, after the when we open directly um, after a full uh, blast running, um, uh, then uh, we have close to the beam pipe in the area of uh, the uh, the HF, we have hot spots of up to about a millisievert per hour. Um, uh, and uh, this goes down relative, very quickly. We are still dominated by um, short-lived uh, isotopes, which are typically after a few days are uh, going already down. And now it is uh, down very much. We have no, no problems anymore. And uh, we have, uh, the pixel also has a little bit of uh, radiation where we have to, when we take it out, we have to be careful. And for this kind of work, we have to do special planning to minimize the, uh, the radiation we uh, expose personnel to. Um, how often the magnet quench could potentially happen? What is the main reason for this? It happens up to now. Um, it happened, it did never quenched uh, no. the magnet. We um, had, I think, in the test phase, one unwanted fast discharge. This was on when it's on the surface, on the surface, underground never. Um, uh, and uh, so what we have had is so-called low, um, slow discharges. And this is if uh, the uh, cold box fails or if the power converter yeah, failed. Not, not related. Quench no, it's not a quench. This is, but it's a, a, a discharge. Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, but a fast discharge uh, and a quench we never had to happen. And how often the magnet uh, quench could potentially uh, happen? Um, what we used to say that the magnet reaches its lifetime when the quench, quench probability reaches fifty percent. Yeah, but uh, and we but we are very far from that. We are very far from that. We just have made the uh, the RRR measurement. We are very far from that. No, the um, the thing is um, also the number of quenches this magnet could survive is of course a bit lower than the number of cycles. Still, the number mm -hmm. of power cycles is already limited, and this is one of the reasons we did the big upgrade um, with the freewheel tyristor, um, uh, this shutdown, to be able, in case of what may happens much more frequently, that we have a power failure which affects the power converter or the cold box, um, which led in previous times to a slow discharge. Um, uh, this is uh, um, just a slow discharge. It means we had, it takes about four hours um, until the magnet is completely charged and we cannot catch up. If we solve the problem before, we cannot catch up and just ramp up again. And this is a problem because if the magnet loses more than about one, one and a half Tesla, um, the, the stress is released and uh, then um, uh, it counts like a cycle where mm -hmm. you have the, the problem um, that these uh, power cycles um, stress and de-stress the magnet, and this uh, um, this is a mechanical. Beer. That's a mechanical um, fatigue problem uh, in principle uh, on a long term, and this limits the lifetime. And with the uh, with the freewheel tyristor, you can uh, bridge um, just the magnet, and you bring it in principle in a you just sh short circuit it and run it over this cooled uh, freewheel tyristor, and the uh, the power loss which it has is much, much smaller even than a, uh, than a um, slow discharge. And if the problem is solved, you can catch up again and can uh, uh, ramp up again straight away. And with that, saving the cycles of the magnet. Yeah. Okay, what percentage of the detector usually works fine? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Oof, this depends on the different and and in what you you count it. Um, uh, so it it is uh, in the high nineties um, percent which is working, um, and uh, if there is a big uh, debate always, and this you have to do also to discuss with the uh, with the people from the physics groups, as soon as something is not working properly, very often the data are thrown away. So if, for example, there is somewhere a hole that uh, because we have a power supply failing also, um, typically the data are uh, thrown away. 
uh, we repair it and, and run. If uh, in a system which has a multi-layer redundancy like the muon system, a layer in the DT fails, of course, then the data is still regarded as, uh, as good. But um, the next possibility we open, of course, we will repair it to keep this redundancy. And this is also one reason we have it. We, we lose over time a little bit, a few channels of, uh, of electronics. Uh, and uh, to still have the detector um, uh, fully operational, um, this, is, uh, this is built in red uh, redundancy. But it is in the high 90s, typically, what the, uh, what the detectors, uh, um, what percentage of the detector is working. But definitely, this should be reflected in the detector simulation in order to have uh, correct Monte Carlos. Yes. By what factor do the inner triplets tighten the particle beam for collision? Oof, now you ask I me. Uh, as far as I remember, the, the beam diameter is somewhere around one millimeter in the LHC. Yes, and, 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 17, micron, down, and 17 micron in the, um, in the collision uh, point. In, the so collision so point. this is, this so this is, is quite a fraction, a large, yeah. yes. OK, so I thought, oh, sorry, I have to. No open questions. No open questions at this moment. Okay, Laza is back up safely on the surface. Thank you yeah, very much. Are we connecting? No, he doesn't. He doesn't want. He to. Doesn't okay. I'm, I'm connected through wireless. No, okay. you are not. That's then fine. You will hear I can hear you. I can hear myself. That's no. good. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> I hear voices. No, no, no. Yes, the speech, efficient my speech cortex uh, shuts down uh, if I hear myself back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Are there more questions? When the magnet is on, does the magnetic field update objects on the surface? No, this we answered. It does not. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any any new questions. Probably people okay. are really astonished by the. Okay, then. By what uh, they saw. I think um, we give them maybe twenty more seconds. Ah, can I repeat this visit when COVID is over? Uh, yes, of course. Or the no. virtual one or the real one? And then you probably <laughs> prefer to have a real one, no? Um, uh, and the answer is yes, uh, we plan to uh, restart. Um, okay, so there are, that, that is one, one message from Dawn. Please remind everyone to go back to the induction room for the last two talks. Yes. And there was, there was a question as well, how to dilution magnets reduce beam intensity after detection? Um, how, how do dilution magnets? I think it's not no, dilution. It's focusing. They, Exactly, they go back the same way yes. in the opposite triplets, and they get back to the yes. this to the uh, one characteristically one millimeter. It is, uh, it is uh, just uh, oscillating between uh, the my, uh, 17 micron and uh, the one millimeter. Back and forth. It's not Prolex. <laughs> so it's for you. Okay. You so concerning the visit, maybe the real visits will start, but not before. Um, yeah, probably after the pilot beam, it's um, the, yeah. the most probable answer there. You have a good chance. Um, and if you want to go into the um, detector cavern, um, you have to do it before um, end of January, I would say, or maybe mid of February, because uh, uh, on the 22nd of February or 21st of uh, February next year, we start beam operation. And then, of course, the, uh, the experimental cavern is closed. And usually we do not reopen it during the, no. the short uh, stops. No, uh, only for, work. for the. That's then, of course, another possibility that um, uh, you volunteer for work and then you can go in uh, quite uh, quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more often. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Please remember to come back to the main Zoom link. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are there, if there are not more questions, I think we stop here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, of the induction. And hope to see you soon here also at point five um, with tools and computers. Yes. All right. All right. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao.